A near-death experience, or NDE, is a profound personal experience associated with death or impending death, which researchers describe as having similar characteristics. These experiences, which are mostly positive, can include sensations of detachment from the body, levitation, total serenity, security, warmth, the experience of absolute dissolution, and the presence of a light. NDEs usually occur during reversible clinical death and have been reported by an estimated 9 million people in the U.S. alone. Common elements of NDEs include a sense of peace, out-of-body experiences, entering a tunnel of darkness or light, encountering deceased loved ones or spiritual beings, a life review, reaching a border or point of no return, and suddenly finding oneself back in one's body. While NDEs are often described as pleasant, some people report distressing or frightening experiences. The exact cause of NDEs remains unclear, and explanations range from scientific to spiritual. Some researchers hypothesize that NDEs are a subjective phenomenon resulting from disturbed brain function during life-threatening events, while others believe they provide evidence of an afterlife or a transcendental realm. Studies have shown that NDEs can occur under various conditions, including cardiac arrest, general anesthesia, and even during meditation. Some researchers have attempted to investigate the accuracy of NDE accounts, such as out-of-body experiences, by placing hidden targets in hospital rooms. However, the results of these studies have been inconclusive. NDEs are often associated with profound changes in personality, beliefs, and attitudes toward life and death. Many experiencers report a newfound appreciation for life, heightened spirituality, and a loss of fear of death. However, some individuals may struggle with integrating their NDE into their everyday lives and may require support to process their experience. While the exact nature of NDEs remains a mystery, they continue to fascinate researchers, medical professionals, and the general public alike, offering a glimpse into the complex relationship between consciousness, life, and death. Nemesis, a theoretical star or brown dwarf, was proposed in 1984 to explain a pattern of mass extinctions occurring every 26 million years. It was suggested to be located far beyond the Oort cloud. Recent studies have raised doubts about Nemesis's existence, suggesting other factors like close-passing stars or gravitational effects from the galactic plane might cause disruptions in the outer solar system. Initially, the periodicity of mass extinctions hinted at a celestial cause, but subsequent research challenged this idea, leading to a decline in support for the Nemesis hypothesis. Various astronomers proposed Nemesis as a companion star to the Sun, theorizing it could disturb comets in the Oort cloud, leading to more impacts on Earth. Alternative theories, like passing stars, gained traction as potential explanations for mass extinctions. Searches for Nemesis in the infrared spectrum, where cooler stars are detected, have yielded no results. While data supported the extinction periodicity, it didn't match the expected orbit of Nemesis. Consequently, the Nemesis hypothesis has fallen out of favor among scientists, prompting exploration of other explanations for mass extinctions. Neo-Luddism is a philosophy that opposes many forms of modern technology, with its adherents often referred to as Luddites, a term generally used pejoratively to describe people with technophobic leanings. The name is derived from the historical English Luddites, who were active between 1811 and 1817. While the original Luddites primarily focused on the economic implications of technological improvements in industrialization, Neo-Luddites tend to have a broader and more holistic distrust of technological progress. Neo-Luddism is a leaderless movement consisting of non-affiliated groups that resist modern technologies and advocate for a return to a more primitive level of technology. Neo-Luddites are characterized by practices such as passively abandoning the use of technology, harming those who produce environmentally harmful technology, advocating for simple living, or sabotaging technology. 
The modern neo-Luddite movement has connections with the anti-globalization movement, anarcho-primitivism, radical environmentalism, and deep ecology. The philosophy of neo-Luddism is based on concerns about the impact of technology on individuals, communities, and the environment. It calls for slowing or stopping the development of new technologies and advocates for a lifestyle that abandons specific technologies, believing this to be the best prospect for the future. Neo-Luddites often look to small-scale agricultural communities, such as the Amish and the Chipko movement in Nepal and India, as models for the future. Neo-Luddites believe that current technologies pose a threat to humanity and the natural world, and that a future societal collapse is possible or even probable without technological reform. Some of their concerns include the replacement of humans by computers, genetic decay due to lack of natural selection, misuse of technological power, control of humanity using various means, and environmental degradation. The neo-Luddite movement is composed of a diverse group of loosely affiliated or non-affiliated individuals and groups, including writers, academics, students, religious groups, environmentalists, and others seeking a technology-free environment. While some neo-Luddites have resorted to vandalism and violence to achieve social change and promote their cause, others, such as Kirkpatrick Sale, maintain that neo-Luddites are not motivated by these actions and reject violent tactics. The Nephilim are mysterious beings or people mentioned in the Hebrew Bible, described as being large and strong. The term Nephilim is sometimes translated as giants, or the fallen ones. Their origins are disputed, with some viewing them as the offspring of fallen angels and humans, while others consider them the descendants of Seth and Cain. The Nephilim are first mentioned in Genesis 6:14 which states that they were on the earth when the sons of God had children with the daughters of men. The passage is ambiguous, leaving it unclear whether the Nephilim are the sons of God or their offspring. In Numbers 13.33, the Anakites, a tribe living in Canaan, are described as descendants of the Nephilim. Interpretations of the Nephilim vary. Some believe they were literal giants, as the earliest translations of the Hebrew Bible such as the Septuagint and the Vulgate, render the term as gigantes. In the Book of Enoch, they are described as being 450 feet tall. Others, including some Christian commentators, argue that the sons of God were fallen angels who mated with human women, giving birth to the Nephilim. This view is based on the use of the phrase sons of God in the Book of Job, where it explicitly refers to angels. However, some Jewish and Christian sources suggest that the sons of God were righteous descendants of Seth, who rebelled and intermarried with the unrighteous descendants of Cain. This interpretation is found in various ancient texts, including the Clementine literature and the writings of some early church fathers. The concept of the Nephilim has also been popularized in modern culture, appearing in various books, television series, and video games often with varying interpretations of their nature and origins. Like this video and subscribe to Maker. Neuralink, an American neurotechnology company founded by Elon Musk and a team of scientists and engineers in 2016, is developing implantable brain-computer interfaces. The company's goal is to create devices that can treat serious brain diseases in the short term, with the eventual aim of human enhancement and achieving symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Neuralink's technology involves ultra-thin probes that are inserted into the brain using an automated surgical robot. These probes contain electrodes capable of detecting electrical signals in the brain and interacting with an electronic system for amplification and acquisition of brain signals. The company has also developed an application-specific integrated circuit to create a high-channel recording system that can convert information obtained from neurons into binary code. The company has faced criticism for its use of animal testing, particularly on monkeys, 
with allegations of mistreatment and unnecessary suffering. In 2023, Neuralink received FDA approval for human clinical trials and began recruiting participants with quadriplegia or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. In January 2024, Musk announced that Neuralink had successfully implanted a brain-computer interface device called telepathy in a human patient. Despite the company's claims and progress, some scientists have expressed skepticism about the novelty and revolutionary nature of Neuralink's technology, citing existing research and developments in the field of brain-machine interfaces. Critics have also accused the company of making overly ambitious claims and lacking evidence for its proposed applications in treating various diseases. I'd like to introduce you to the first ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, not many more of those out there. <laughs> my name's Nolan Arbaugh. I'm 29 years old. About eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4-C5. So I'm a complete quadriplegic. So I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I have no sensation or movement below my level of injury, so below my shoulders. Let me just flip the camera around so you can see what uh, Nolan's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouth stick and stuff, but now it's all, uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen, that's, that's all me, y'all. Um, it's pretty cool, huh? The Nevada Triangle, located in the Sierra Nevada Mountains of Nevada and California, is a mysterious area where approximately 2,000 planes have vanished over the past 60 years. This remote region spans over 25,000 square miles of mountainous desert terrain. Many of the missing aircraft were piloted by experienced aviators who disappeared under strange circumstances, with the wreckage never recovered. Conspiracy theories suggest that the nearby presence of the secretive Area 51 military base may play a role in these disappearances. However, experts believe the unique geographical and atmospheric conditions of the Sierra Nevada mountains are more likely responsible. The range's high altitude peaks and wedge shape, combined with strong winds from the Pacific jet stream, create unpredictable and dangerous flying conditions known as mountain waves. These powerful downdrafts can cause planes to seemingly be ripped from the sky. The area has also claimed military aircraft, including a B-24 bomber in 1943 and an F-117 stealth fighter in 1986. Despite decades of search efforts, the majority of planes lost within the Nevada Triangle remain undiscovered, their fate a mystery. Newcomb's Paradox is a thought experiment in philosophy and mathematics that involves a game between two players, one of whom can predict the future. The game revolves around two boxes, A and B. Box A always contains $1,000 while the contents of box B depend on the predictor's prediction. If the predictor thinks the player will choose both boxes, box B is empty. But if the predictor believes the player will only take box B, it contains $1 million. The paradox arises because two seemingly logical strategies lead to different outcomes. One strategy, based on expected utility, suggests that if the predictor is almost always right, the player should choose only box B to maximize their winnings. The other strategy, based on dominance, argues that taking both boxes is always better because it yields an extra $1,000 compared to taking only box B. Newcomb's paradox also raises questions about free will and determinism. If a perfect predictor exists, it could mean that the player's choice is predetermined, and free will is an illusion. Some philosophers argue that the paradox demonstrates the incompatibility of free will and determinism. Newgrange, a prehistoric monument located in County Meath, Ireland, is a grand passage tomb built around 3200 BC, making it older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. 
The monument consists of a large circular mound with a stone passageway leading to a cruciform chamber. The mound is ringed by 97 large curb stones, some of which are engraved with megalithic art. One of the most remarkable features of Newgrange is its alignment with the rising sun during the winter solstice. One of the most remarkable features of Newgrange is its alignment with the rising sun during the winter solstice. The passage and chamber are precisely aligned so that on the shortest day of the year, December 21st, the first rays of the rising sun shine through a roof box above the entrance and illuminate the chamber floor. This event lasts for approximately 17 minutes. In Irish mythology, Newgrange is associated with the Tuatha de Danann, a supernatural race, and is said to be the home of the deity Dagda. The monument continued to hold significance for centuries, with evidence of ritual activity during the Bronze Age and Iron Age. The purposes of Newgrange are still debated, but most archaeologists believe it had religious importance, possibly as a place of worship or a tomb for the dead. The winter solstice alignment suggests that the sun played a significant role in the beliefs of the Neolithic people who built it. Today, Newgrange is a popular tourist attraction and protected heritage site. Visitors can explore the ancient monument through guided tours and a visitor center. Each year, a lottery is held to select a small group of people to witness the winter solstice illumination from inside the chamber. The Nibiru Cataclysm is a hypothetical disastrous encounter between Earth and a large planetary object, referred to as Nibiru or Planet X, which certain groups believe will take place in the early 21st century. This idea originated in 1995 with Nancy Leder, a woman who claims to receive messages from extraterrestrials through an implant in her brain. According to Leder, the object would sweep through the inner solar system in May 2003, causing a physical pole shift and widespread destruction on Earth. The concept of Nibiru has since spread beyond Leader's website, and has been embraced by various internet doomsday groups, often linked to the 2012 phenomenon and the supposed end of the Mayan calendar. The name Nibiru itself is derived from the works of Zechariah Sitchin, an author who claimed that ancient Mesopotamian texts refer to a planet called Nibiru that passes near Earth every 3,600 years. Astronomers reject the idea of the Nibiru Cataclysm, pointing out that such an object would be easily visible to the naked eye and would cause noticeable disturbances in the orbits of planets. Many photos claiming to show Nibiru are actually lens flares, false artifacts, or misidentified celestial objects. NASA and other scientific organizations have made efforts to inform the public that there is no credible evidence supporting the Nibiru Cataclysm hypothesis. Despite a lack of scientific evidence, the Nibiru Cataclysm idea continues to be revived by various conspiracy theorists and doomsday proponents. Dates for the supposed cataclysm have been revised multiple times, with some linking it to other astronomical events or objects such as comets or hypothetical planets. The concept remains popular on internet forums and continues to generate concern among the public, leading to a significant number of inquiries to astronomers and scientific institutions. Nicolae Minovici was a Romanian forensic scientist and criminologist who conducted unusual and daring experiments on the effects of hanging on the human body in the early 20th century. Minovici performed a series of self-hanging experiments, gradually increasing the duration of each hanging session up to a maximum of 25 seconds. He used a dynamometer to measure the force applied to his neck and recorded various physiological responses, such as vision disturbances, skin color changes, and ringing in his ears. In his final experiment, Minovici used a constricting hangman's knot and could only endure the hanging for four seconds, despite his feet remaining in contact with the ground. He experienced pain while swallowing for a month following this experiment. Minovici also conducted choking experiments on volunteers, applying pressure to their carotid arteries and jugular veins for up to five seconds. The subjects reported experiences such as vision problems, heat sensations in the head, and tingling or numbing sensations throughout their bodies. 
Minovici's research on hanging was published in a 200-page work titled Study on Hanging, in both Romanian and French. His unconventional approach to studying the physiological effects of hanging provided valuable insights into the mechanisms of this form of execution and asphyxiation. In addition to his research on hanging, Minovici also studied the connections between tattooing and criminal behavior. He founded the Legal Medicine Association of Romania and published the Romanian Journal of Legal Medicine. Upon his death in 1941, Minovici bequeathed his estate, including his home and a collection of Romanian folk art, to his country. His former residence in Bucharest now serves as the Nicolae Minovici Folk Art Museum. Nicholas Notovich, a Crimean Jewish adventurer, claimed to have discovered a lost manuscript while staying at the Hemis Monastery in Ladakh, India in the late 19th century. This manuscript, which he called The Life of Saint Isa, allegedly detailed the missing years of Jesus Christ's life, suggesting that Jesus had traveled to India and studied with Buddhists and Hindus before returning to Judea. Notovich's claims generated significant controversy upon the publication of his book La Vie Inconnue de Jésus Christ, The Unknown Life of Jesus Christ, in 1894. Many scholars and religious leaders questioned the authenticity of Notovich's account, with some accusing him of fabricating the entire story. Despite the skepticism surrounding Notovich's claims, some individuals in India and the United States found his story credible. Swami Abhedananda, a colleague of the famous scholar Max Müller, claimed to have visited the Hemis Monastery in 1922 and verified the existence of the manuscript. He even had portions of the text translated and published in his travelogue. The controversy surrounding Notovich's discovery has persisted, with some authors incorporating the idea of Jesus' travels to India into their own works, while others dismiss it as a hoax. The consensus among modern scholars is that Notovich's account was fabricated, and no concrete evidence has been found to support the existence of the Life of Saint Isa manuscript. Nigel Cheese, who sometimes goes by Nigel Cheese Hands, is an English researcher who has gained attention for his unconventional scientific claims. Cheese states that he is a former sailor in the British Navy and holds multiple doctorate degrees, although he has not provided evidence to support these assertions. He also claims to have an exceptionally high IQ of 207. Cheese's research focuses heavily on magnets, which he believes have been present on Earth far longer than humans. His understanding of magnets is unique, and he appears to subscribe to a form of the electric universe theory, as well as promoting concepts that fall outside the realm of mainstream mathematics. In one of his most well-known videos, Cheese claims to have debunked several academic fields, including math, physics, biology, and engineering, using a simple magnet during a presentation he gave while serving in the Navy. He attempts to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 1 by combining two magnets, each with a north and south pole, to create a single magnet with only one north and one south pole. However, this demonstration does not take into account the importance of units in mathematical equations. Cheese also claims to have disproven the relationship between infinity and 720 degrees, the famous equation E equals mc squared, and Newton's laws of motion using his interpretation of magnets and magnetic fields. He suggests that magnets can resist gravity due to cold fusion and zero-point energy, and that they possess a hidden second set of poles. In addition to his magnet research, Cheese has promoted the idea of curing cancer with ionized water and generating free electricity by aligning magnets. He has also developed a project called the Gaia Project, or PCAM, Photonic Catalytic Amplification Matrix, which he claims can produce highly efficient energy panels that surpass the performance of traditional solar panels. While Cheese's ideas have gained attention online, they have also been met with skepticism and ridicule from the scientific community, who question the validity of his claims and the lack of supporting evidence. Nikola Tesla, a Serbian-American inventor and engineer, 
made significant contributions to modern electricity systems. Born in the mid-19th century, Tesla pursued engineering and physics without a formal degree. In the 1880s, he gained experience in telephony and electric power. In 1884, Tesla moved to the United States, briefly working at the Edison Machine Works before starting his own ventures. With support, he established labs and companies in New York, creating various electrical and mechanical devices. His AC induction motor, patented in 1888, brought him fame and formed the basis of the widely adopted polyphase system. Tesla experimented with mechanical oscillators, electrical tubes, and wireless control, showcasing his inventions to celebrities. He explored wireless lighting and global power distribution, conducting high-voltage experiments in New York and Colorado Springs. His ambitious Wardenclyffe Tower project for wireless communication and power transmission was never completed due to funding issues. In later years, Tesla faced financial struggles, residing in New York hotels with unpaid bills. He passed away in 1943. Tesla's work gained recognition posthumously, with the SI unit of magnetic flux density named after him in 1960. Since the 1990s, there has been renewed interest in Tesla and his groundbreaking work. The Paradoxist movement is an avant-garde literary style that embraces contradictions, experiments with form and content, and pushes the boundaries of traditional literature. Founded by Florentin Smarandash in Romania in the 1980s, the movement encourages writers to create non-poems and anti-literature that challenge conventional notions of art and meaning. Paradoxist works often feature unconventional structures, such as poems composed entirely of punctuation marks, mathematical equations, or blank spaces. The content of these pieces may be absurd, nonsensical, or self-contradictory, reflecting the movement's emphasis on exploring the limits of language and logic. Smarandash and his fellow paradoxists sought to create a revolutionary form of expression that would break free from the constraints of traditional literary norms. They embraced anarchy and experimentation as key principles, encouraging writers to push the boundaries of what is considered acceptable or meaningful in literature. The paradoxist movement has attracted writers from various countries, including Morocco, France, and Turkey. These authors have contributed to the growth of the movement by producing their own paradoxist works and helping to spread its ideas to new audiences. While the paradoxist movement may seem radical or even incomprehensible to some readers, its proponents view it as a vital exploration of the possibilities of language and a challenge to the status quo in the literary world. By embracing the absurd and the contradictory, paradoxist writers seek to expand the horizons of what can be expressed through the written word.